Tell me about, you know, one by 20 doc system, single set stuff. Where has that all um, came into your work? Well, you know, the single set mentality, you know, originally came from a logistical situation with us, um, with power development to speed and kind of the situation we get put in with, <laughs> with uh, facilities management or, or being somewhere else that you don't own or work and, and whatever. And we started playing with the idea of potentiation with single set French contrast stuff. And, and doing a single set in French contrast is really not an extreme measure. That's been done before. So then I took that concept and found that the out, power output was pretty remarkable in the coming days from that. And I thought, man, we ought, to, we ought to just push this theme out and see in some low risk situations. And we found it to elevate performance physically and psychologically. And what we started seeing is that our, our guys that were top performers that really can access that flow state, speaking of culture, um, they go there. When I give them one set, they do not like that feeling of not being able to practice makes perfect, if that makes sense. And so when I, when I started doing this, I found that the guys that perform in crunch time they just completely elevated in the one set approach and the guys that we had seen not necessarily be themselves in those situations, they shrunk in the, they shrunk in the one set too and underperformed. And so we identified it as, you know what, this is a way to kind of attack a lot of different things. So we look at it as a psychological and physiological opportunity um, to not put pressure on them, but put them in a situation that's realistic to sport. And make them perform at a level that is competition with their peers. So, you know, if, you, if, if we're doing um, miles per hour on swings, there's going to be a champion from right to left and left to right. And I don't care what you do. I don't care if you're a quarterback or what you are. If it's spinal engine work, somebody's going to be the king. And you get one shot, no redos, no warm-up swings. And we have just seen there to be a great benefit from that. And, you know, the backdrop of it initially was an in-season training for baseball and in gymnastics. And I have since then applied this to NBA and NFL uh, concepts and consulting. And um, it's been so much fun to integrate this and play with it because I think we're, we're, we're out there on an island that I don't know if people have done a lot. And it's, you know, Dr. Yeses with the one times 20 is one thing, but I mean, I've done one times three before. I've done one times one. Um, and, it, and it's a heck of a lot of fun. I can tell you that. Yeah, the, the single shot thing or yeah, treating it more of um, like, I mean, one by 20, I think is it's it is a single shot, but it's also more efficient, longer. It's a different stimuli. I think that's maybe a different, slightly different ballpark but right. is the mentality of you get one shot at this. Uh, I remember reading maybe three, four years ago, someone wrote an article on how they revolutionized their uh, track and field four by 100 relay team by only letting people have like two attempts at a handoff in practice. Most times you look, go to a track practice. And it's going to be just keep going, keep going till you get it, keep going till you get it. And I mean, that, no, on, on a level, that's, I think that's okay, maybe in early learning stages and whatever. But at the end of the day, who do you think is going to get the better handoff? The person who under the gun, you get one chance today and that's it, like who can do it versus the person who, I, it just makes total sense. And I like how that you've ported that over into everything. I wish I could go back in time for myself as an athlete because I was, the opposite of that. I was the, I'm going to shoot around until I get this shot and I, and by myself and with no one guarding me. Even I think that's the reason there was a huge hang up for me and my own conversion of sport is everything was, I'm going to make myself a better athlete. Sure. That's great. But can you, but it was through like all this calculation and, and it was, it was an expanded training regime. It was not crunch time, single set stuff. And that was where I had I would oftentimes really struggle once the pressure and everything was was on in the game, and so I I really appreciate that mentality. I, it takes me to like Christian Thibodeau and his neuro, you know, neurotyping ideologies, and you got you know the type one and their type one B that like the all star, the gamer, versus the type three who's like the analytical. I need to be coached through this. I need to know everything about it. That's not going to work in the game very well. I mean, you could prepare yourself, you could try to prepare yourself that way, but that's not how the game works. And so it would be interesting, like, uh, that, that, yeah, the intervention process is someone who needs to be overly like who wants too much coaching and stuff like that. And how do you get them to be better at the single set mentality? It, it can be difficult. There, there's no question that you have to, 
you know, ease your way into it. I, I think that the whole one set concept is, I just think it's incredibly realistic and people that are overly analytical, they don't, they, they, they can be that way. And I think it's an, it's something that has to be satisfied. We have to help them with that. Um, and I'm that way, but in the game, you do, that's not the time. And we have to put them in situations where they don't get an opportunity to do that in the training in order to see how their body and their, their mind and their spirit reacts to it. Um, it's been a lot of fun to see it and kind of see it transfer for, for certain athletes. And it's also been good to use it as more of a potentiation approach for athletes like baseball players that have to, you know, their workouts before batting practice right before the game. So if I'm monitoring their stress, a lot of their stress is from the workout and I've got to minimize that, but I've got to keep some of those athletic attributes on the highest of levels. And I can't rely on the gameplay to take care of those things. I, I like how back to, you mentioned Steven Kotler again, and I like the idea of one thing he mentioned that stuck with me. Uh, I think it stuck with me too, because in my own like work as a, in writing and stuff like that, he talked about Ernest Hemingway, like when he reached the peak of his like writing on the day when he was the most excited about it he just left like the sentence hanging like mid-sentence where that would drive so many people nuts like i do not want to you know i'm on a roll can't i i don't want to stop here but then they would take it too far like you know I, i'm going for four percent right of, of improvement and you just take it past that and so to me it seems like a single set amongst other benefits also offers the it basically it it, it foolproofs the fact that this athlete is not going to take their cns too far they are not going to overtrain that element and they're always going to want more. They're like, Oh, come on, coach. Can I have another shot? Or it almost seems like that could be a thing too. I think about like bonder check or high frequency or factorization in the DB hammer universe where you're like going uh, like almost every day or yep. training every day. Maybe that's something there that would allow you to do that. If you're really trying to compress and work on one skill, like, all right, come back tomorrow. You can get your one chance tomorrow. <laughs> you know? I think it's a great idea. I, you know, that's a really good idea. I haven't thought about it that way with his philosophies. That would make a lot of sense. You know, I think the Parkinson's law idea really explains it from a psychological standpoint in that the amount of time that we're given is the amount of time it will take us to, to perfect or complete something. And, and that's been a concept for a long time in the workforce. So when consulting happens with the business, uh, you know, typically you come back and you say, okay, you're not efficient right here. And then the, they'll bring out the Parkinson's law analogy and say, you need to give them less time to complete X, Y, and Z tasks. And you'll find that they complete those tasks in that amount of time. I think just applying those principles to these athletes and letting them know, you know, like the 10,000 hour rule that came from musicians and violinists. It, it, it's not an athlete rule. You know, it's not. The situation that you're about to be in competition, you likely have never been in that exact situation and you likely will never will be again exact that exact situation and we've got to be more comfortable putting our athletes in those things you know being risk adverse of course but they need to psychologically go there and physiologically show that they can perform and i think that's one piece of it you know obviously we're we're anchored in the physical development side um, as a primary for our job but there's no question that that mindset is going to spill over into their practice habits uh, the volume they expose themselves to uh, up to and that could that could affect the the longevity of a career or even the availability and later in the game or the availability later in the season so that that those are there's a number of reasons but those are among the top reasons for it 